Good morning on this Independence Day 2024. Um, I hope that you'll be able to celebrate the joy of freedom. I mean, it's just, I mean, uh, I commented a couple times, but the freedoms that we have as citizens of the United States are indeed wonderful. The freedom we have as children of God are, <laughs> I think, even greater. Um, the freedom to know that our sins are forgiven, the freedom to know that God is filled with grace and glory and that no matter what we do, you know, that nothing can separate us from his His love. You know, Paul, Paul writes that, you know, nothing in all of creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. That's in Romans 8, well, chapter or verse 39 or something like that, 38. But uh, we are indeed fortunate to live in this country and I give thanks for those who uh, had the courage all those years ago to stand up to stand up for their rights and also for our rights. We're going to look today at chapters 30 and 31 of Job. This, these are Job's final words to his friends. And chapter 30, you know, begins, now they make sport of me. I mean, and, he, and he, he's not just talking about his friends. He's talking about the low life of the world, the, the rabble, you know, the, you know, um, those who are younger than I, whose fathers I would have disdained to set with that, you know, they're just, you know, anybody and everybody is making fun of Job and poking, look at him, look at him, you know, he's, he's you know, um, he's lost it all. He's just ignoring everything. And, um, but he's, uh, you know, verse verse five, they are driven out from society. People shout at them after a thief. In the gullies of the waters, they, they live in the holes in the ground. Among the bushes, they bray. A seamless, disreputable brood have been whipped out of my hand. So, it, you know, it's it's not just the, the upper class, but it's it's anybody and everybody is looking at Job and poking fun at him. Or at least, you know, that's the way Job feels. And I can I, I can empathize with that, you know, because sometimes we too think that everything is going against us. I mean, that there is no hope, that there is no chance. I mean, and Job is so down and so out here. You know, and now they mock me in song. I'm a byword for them. Um, and then verse 11, God has loosened my bowstring and humbled me. He's made me powerless. You know, if you're you know, the bowstring on a bow, if it's loosened, I mean, you can't pull the arrow back and shoot. You are powerless. You got, you got nothing to defend yourself. So God has taken all of Job's power from him. And, and, um, he says he's cast off the restraint and my pressure. And then again, on my right hand, the rabble rise up against me. And this feeling of, of loneliness and, and, and just no hope. You know, verse 15, terrors are turned upon me. My honor is pursued by the wind and my prosperity has passed away like a cloud. You know, my honor is pushed away by the, or pursued as by the wind. You know, this is, you know, I mean, you can't catch the wind. The wind, you know, just, it goes where it wants to. And uh, you just, you, know, you can't work against it. And then verse 16 uh, sounds almost like Psalm 22. And now my soul is poured out within me, you know, and and the days of affliction have taken a hold of me, you know, and it's, you know, Jesus says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? My bones are dried up, you know, and out of joint. And this is the way Job feels. The, the night racks my bones with pains, um, with violence. He seizes my garments. Verse 20, I cry to you and you do not answer. He feels abandoned. He feels lost. He feels that, that, that hopeless despair that there is nothing. I stand and you merely look. You have turned cruel to me with the might of your hand. You persecute me. You know, it's just, I mean, Job is just, he's, he's at the bottom. You know, he's, he's hit rock bottom and he just nowhere to turn. Every time he, he cries out to God, he's getting no answer. He's feeling just lost and forgotten and, and alone. And, and his three friends haven't been helping, as we are well aware of. Verse 26 again, a feeling of despair. I look for good, evil came. When I waited for light, darkness came. You know, I mean, it's just, I mean, he would hit his hopes and his dreams and, and just boom, he just got bashed and bashed and bashed. 
You know, my inward parts are in turmoil. I go about in sunless gloom. I stand in the assembly. I mean, how deep, how deep and dark is his depression right now? How this feeling of, of loss? I go about in sunless gloom. I mean, right now it's kind of gloomy outside. I, it was sprinkling a little bit as I walked out here. I should have come 20 minutes earlier. I would have stayed dry. But, but you know, the sunless gloom. I mean, it's just, you know, when the sun is shining and, and the, the sky is blue and, you know, our, our feelings are uplifted. But, you know, the sunless gloom, is, it's just, you know, kind of depressing. We, need, we are people of the light that way, for sure. And then chapter 31 is, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's an, kind of a negative confession. You know, it's, you know, uh, if I have walked with falsehood and my foot hurried, you know, if my step has turned aside, and if my heart is, you know, it, it's all these, you know, if I have done any of these things, you know, so it's, you know, he's saying if I have, and, um, but he hasn't, you know, he's, he, he's, he's using these examples of, you know, if I have done this, you know, then this should happen. If I've, you know, and, um, and that, that little word if is just such a tough word to get around sometimes. If I have rejected the cause of my slaves, if I have withheld anything from the poor, you know, if I have seen anyone perish for lack of clothing or food, if I have raised my hand against an orphan, it's all of these, you know, if, if I've done these things wrong, I mean, then my punishment is justified. If you've seen me do these things wrong, you know, but he's, he's saying, I haven't done any of these things. You know, I, you know, if I have rejoiced at the ruin of those who hated me, if I have not let my, you know, if, you know, if those of my tent have ever said, oh, that we might be, you know, I mean, but Job is just using these statements of kind of a, you know, a questioning. He's questioning God and he's stating these questions to this, to his friends there. A mosquito just flew in front of my eyes, so that's what I looked at. And, but, but Job is coming with, I think he's a dead mosquito now. But anyway, he, he's coming to his friends and he's, he's using these questions and as, you know, kind of a negative statement, a negative confession, but no, not a confession because He's saying, I didn't do any of these things wrong. I, you know, I took care of the orphans. I fed those who were hungry. I, I, I clothed those who were, were naked. I, I helped those who needed help. Uh, I was, uh, you know, verse five, if I have walked with falsehood and my foot is uh, hurried to deceit, but no, he, he's, he's saying it as an opposite because he's been honest and he's been upright in all of his dealings with everybody. If my step is turned aside from a way, you know, no, I, I've been honor, uh, honest with God. I've been a believer in God. I've been faithful to God. You know, it's just, so he's using these statements to pour his heart out. And and, and sometimes we, I, I think we need to come to God that way too. We, we pour our hearts out. And, and just like Job, we sometimes feel lost, abandoned, that there is no hope. And, um, but in the midst of all of this, you know, uh, in the midst of all of this, how does Job re retain his faith and trust in God? Because God, I mean, Job never, never denies his faith and trust in God. I mean, these, the, the last three verses of, of Job's statement here, the, you know, the very last words in, in my Bible of chapter 31, or the words of Job are ended. But but these last three verses, if my land has cried out against me and there's furrows have wept together, if I have eaten its yields without payment and caused the death of its owners, let thorns grow instead of wheat and foul words instead of barley. If I have sinned, let thorns grow instead of herb. Yeah, thorns grow instead of wheat and weeds instead of barley. You know, as we drive around and we look at the fields today, they are much cleaner than they were years ago. Uh, but yet there are weeds, there are mustard plants, there are Canadian thistles, there are pigeon grass growing. I mean, all of these weeds are out there. 
And so Job is saying, let my fields be overrun, overtaken with these weeds, if, if indeed I have sinned against God and against my fellow human being. He's you know, pleading his, his innocence, pleading, pleading for a, a, a response from God to, to find out why. Why has this happened? And I mean, this is, this is the age old question. Why? Why is there suffering in the world? Why is there pain in the world? Why doesn't everything work out good? Why isn't all disease ended? And, and we cry out to God for, for answers that way. And, and so Job is, you know, he's, he, he's at rock bottom. He's just feeling, you know, he's, he's feeling abandoned by God and there's no help from his friends. He's just feeling that he is the butt of every person's joke. And, um, and it's just, I mean, this whole book, I mean, we got to put it all together and, and to look at it, you know, as, as a condition of human suffering in the world. And to know that, um, that the human suffering we have in the world is temporary, that there is promise for a better future. And we'll get into that as we continue reading the book of Job.